Hello everyone and welcome back to Dishonored 2. This is episode 7. Last time we went to the Royal Conservatory and dealt with Brianna Ashworth's ocularum device. She has now been rendered useless to Delilah. No more void powers for her. And uh, I realized that the missing two bone charms are actually the ones that Brianna would have had on her person that uh, I guess we should have like knocked her out and then looted her body and then that would have allowed us to, to get those. That's unfortunate because those seemed like very, very useful bone charms too, but that's okay. Uh, we're now back on the Dreadful Whale. We're going to talk with the gang to decide our next steps. I wonder if Hypatia's left because her door's closed. Yep. She's out. She gone. It was getting dangerous. She left us a farewell message. My mind is finally clearing. Now I can return to my work here, helping those who need it the most. And what can I say about what you've done for me? Saved me from madness and worse, from giving in to a life of sadistic brutality. How could I ever repay you for that? Given who you are and what you're in Karnaka to do, I can only say good luck. The city, the country, the empire, everyone is counting on you. I'll send something special for you by way of courier. I hope it helps. Something special. It was a farewell indeed. There you go. Okay. Let's see what else we can do before we speak to the group. There's always new books and documents to discover around the place. Okay. Oh, another audiograph instead of like a diary or anything. Okay. So our young friend is headed into the dust district. Nobody lives there unless they don't have a choice. And people like Emily don't even visit. According to Sokolov, she'll be trying to get into Aramis Stilton's house. <laughs> Not easy. I've tried. Stilton was a friend. Even as a mine owner, he was a good man who came up from working people and never forgot it. I went looking for him the night he disappeared. But the house was swarming with the Grand Guard. I showed them what I was worth, but it cost me. I'll live to see that score settled. Damn. All right, Megan. Listening to this audiograph made me finally think of something, and I went, damn. Everybody's got quite a few of these audiograph players, don't they? Because there's, like, so many of them just, like, laying around, and everyone's like, it's a good thing I've got my extra... Jindosh Clockwork Audiograph, uh, and I've got another six downstairs if I want it. Uh, and it, it makes me think about Bioshock, because Bioshock has the recordings that you pick up, and they're like these actual, like, everyone's got their little handheld recorders because they're documenting their adventures, and you pick those up and you listen to those. Uh, and that makes sense. <laughs> but everyone's carrying around these heavy pieces of machinery here instead. Which is very interesting. It makes you kind of, if you had your own little portable device and you just picked up the little audiograph, like these things, and then you just put them in a device, like uh, you got a dishonored Walkman, and you uh, you listen to them uh, as you as you go, so you can still be on the move <laughs> and listen to them. I suppose it's just an interesting thought. So Megan's moved from diary. Listen to me, talking to myself like the old loon I am. Uh, Megan's moved from diary to audiograph. Sokolov's definitely had some upgrades in terms of his humanity, hasn't he? Because that's the thing, we, we had a little bit of an insight with the heart and you know he regrets all the things that he's done in the past and I think they've made him such a, a, a tragic and sympathetic character in this in this one which is good 
Um, Megan was writing Sokolov a note while she was peeing. Anton, that tin of putty was meant for the porthole seals. I see you've now smeared it all over a canvas. Is that your idea of art? And how will you keep the rain out? Do your painting whatever it is, but use your own things. Leave my stuff alone. I'm trying to run a ship here. Also, your snoring is dreadful. Can you prop up your pillow? You're always bragging about some old thing you invented. Well, invent something for that, why don't you? And then Sokolov will go and take a crap and that's the that's the move, huh? Got anything new to repair down here? Last time it was blood flies. What is it this time? We've got a busted ass pipe. Doesn't look like it's uh, anything that's standing out to me, which is nice. We can go and talk to Sukolov. One of these days, man. Got another great catch. Brianna, Megan is out in the city, but I'll explain. Oh, nice. Just like the wanted posters. She's using, uh, he's using that for inspiration. So many years. I never expected to feel so tired. I huh. came to Karnaka for the food and the clean air. Now this. Paolo. Paolo's not that old, but there's so much living written into the lines of his face. The Royal Conservatory got us closer to understanding Delilah's secret. Now for the next step. I love how good the all of the artwork and the portraits are in this game and how it's like worked in to be Sokolov's artwork. With Ashworth eliminated, that should hamper Delilah's plans. To see the cliffs rising up again, to watch the dust storms. Ooh, dust district, overseers or howlers, okay. Your dear editor is stepping aside this week to give you both sides of an argument raging across the city. So it looks like we're potentially being given a a choice here. We're saying it's like dust districts, overseers or howlers. The Howler Blight. The letter published last week by the Gazette was an outrage. How could Madame Anto suggest that the dust district and even Karnaka itself would be better off if we legitimized Paolo and his howlers in any way? Instead, decent folk should hope to wake one morning and read that Paolo is finally dead or in jail. And why should we be wary of the Abbey? Only a witch need worry about the wrath of the overseers. The Howlers are nothing but a bunch of cutthroats who never worked a day in their life. Everything they have, they stole. If you want their so-called protection, it comes at a price. On the contrary, the overseers have dedicated their lives to spreading the good values of the seven strictures. Believe me, the dust in Batista is not in our streets, but in our hearts, and only the Abbey will make us clean again. Sebastian Armitage. And then, on the overseers... We don't need the Abbey. Take heed, friends. The Abbey seeks to control our city and our lives. The overseers are building chapels and outposts, taking advantage of the despair in the crumbling corners of Sokonos, like our own infamous dust district. You may have seen the sly propaganda from my learned rival, Sebastian Armitage, but consider with care. The Abbey will invade your homes, looking for evidence of witchcraft or wrongdoing, and to them all manner of possessions are suspicious. They imprison and torture the innocent with the intent of extracting confessions. They frown on dancing, drinking, and gatherings. Are you prepared to abandon the gleaner's feast? Are you ready to submit completely as they demand? The Dust District can only be saved by the very people who have lived here all their lives, like me, like you, like Paolo and his howlers, trying to make things better for us small people. Patrolling our streets, collecting and distributing resources to the ones in need. If more of us had Paolo's courage, Maybe the Dust District could be called Batista again. Mavis Anto. And this is the great thing about, like, pieces like this, is when you read a negative opinion on one group and they give these examples on why and then puff up the other group, you see their reason, you see their perspective, and you go, oh, okay, I see what you're getting at here. And reading both of those side by side, you can see that they're focusing on just the negatives of the other group and then trying to subtly reinforce the positives of these other groups 
without acknowledging their negatives. You know, they're just going, these guys suck and these guys are good. Instead of giving a weighted description of both of them with the good and bad that they can both bring to the table, you know? Aramis Stilton's home looks more like a bunker than a mansion. The Dust District. Hmm. I've read about the winds coming through the cleft in Shindere Peak, how the city uses it for windmills and mining operations. Okay, heading to a new location, the Dust District with Stilton Manor. The owls are not what they seem. I won't start the briefing just yet. Note from Sokolov. It's true, Emily. I don't tinker with mechanical devices much anymore, but I'm not so old as to be useless just yet. Behold, I have fashioned a little contrivance for you using only parts scavenged from this wretched vessel. Yes, all right. A few bits were currently in use, but I assure you none were involved in keeping us afloat. Say nothing to Megan, as her disposition needs no further souring. In any case, may this device serve you well. Oh, you just he's made me a stun mine. Thank you, mate. I've already got a few of those, but I appreciate it. The gesture is ever so kind. Hmm. I can carry this glass that has paintbrushes in it. I'm assuming the paintbrushes will just go everywhere. Look at that. It's a magic trick. I'm going to make this glass <laughs> disappear and the paintbrushes will fall gracefully. What is that? Like some sort of um, mask on the face? That's interesting. Anton Sokolov's diary, The Gears of Time. Hello again, neglected journal. I smile as I write this, for I know others will read it when I'm gone to the void, or perhaps as I languish in a prison cell somewhere. Fine then, read away and laugh if it is in your nature, at my foolishness and my aching joints. Does it please you to know that even walking is a chore, but I am too proud to use a cane? I can hear my bones protest with every step, a most unpleasant grinding noise that follows me wherever I go. Is it amusing to you that my eyes can barely see this page, or that my hand trembles as I hold the pen? Then laugh. Yes, the once great Sokolov is now just a tired old bag of bones. My meals are brought to me. Soon someone will have to hold the spoon lest I starve. I find it nearly impossible to paint and even more difficult to urinate, so laugh. But then pause in your glee and take a moment to realize this. The same fate awaits you, my friend, should you be smart enough and lucky enough to live as long as I have. I used to be cool and hip and with it. And then it all got confusing and weird and it'll happen to you. Okay, lovely. Let us start the briefing. I need to know why Delilah can't be killed. Everything we've learned implies that something strange happened at Aramis Stilton's home three years ago, but then he disappeared. Stilton lived in a bunker kept secure by a fancy lock made by Jindosh. Maybe inside you'll learn more about how to stop Delilah. But I have to get there first, through a ruin created by the Duke, where my father grew up. Megan had an intriguing idea. Howlow is leader of the Howlers. He wants Vice Overseer Byrne killed. And of course, Byrne wants Paolo dead too. Both groups will attack you on sight, but walk in with the corpse of their chief enemy, and they'll treat you like family. You think they'll help me get into Aramis Stilton's home? I'm pretty sure that will work. Seeing this place and these people, I can feel my perspective changing. How will I be different after this? Yeah, so... 
deliver one to the other. Confer with your allies. Okay. The Vice Overseer for Karnaka, Liam Byrne. The detailing in those faces is incredible. Alright, well I guess we have no choice but to go and do our best with the choices that have been laid before us. Megan left a note for you. She's going to meet you... where was it? Go somewhere. I'm sure you'll find her. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find her. Ready now? Let's go. Ready. Take Megan's skiff closer. Okay, Sokolov's taken us on the journey. Dust District. You must travel through the Dust District to Aramis Stilton's Manor, which contains more of Delilah's secrets. Vice Overseer Byrne and his religious followers are at war with Paolo, leader of the Howler Gang. Either Byrne or Paolo will aid you for a favor. Look at them MF Doom masks. Why can't we all just get along, guys? Who was the man I'm after? Aramis Stilton? An ally to the old Duke. Loyal and smart. Stilton helped build modern Karnaka with those silver mines. Started as a miner and worked his way up until he was a prince of industry. But now the new Duke drives the mine crews night and day. Dust falls non-stop onto the district. What was once prosperous is now in ruins. I suppose the Duke doesn't care, as long as he sips from silver cups. And what are the cups at Dunwall Tower made from, Empress? In any case, you'll have to pass through the Dust District to reach Stoughton's home. Maybe he's still in there, or maybe he's dead. It's nice to see Circle of Space cleaning up. Find Megan once you reach the Dust District. She'll tell you more. I'll wait here with this skiff and take you back to the dreadful whale after you finish. The mines could have been run slower for another generation. Aristotle's bunker is sealed by the Jindosh Lock, a contraption that Anton Sokolov implied was nearly impossible to solve. Until now. Okay. We will see. So she has a plan for getting us in. Well, everything is back behind us. Interesting. Somewhere near they hold hands. They drink poison together. This old couple. A banker tricked them out of their home. Jesus. The Batista Overlook. Good damn. Okay. Certainly something. Do not none of our squads patrol through the dust district anymore. Orders from the Duke. We're losing too many people. Good soldiers blinded by that hallucinogenic powder the howlers use, then stabbed mm. to death or dragged down by the Abbey's hounds. One young lieutenant got hit by an overseer grenade, and that was it. She was one of the Duke's distant cousins or something. I left it open, someone left a hang. Shit. Let's hope they do enough damage to each other so the fight goes out of them. That won't happen until someone manages to kill either Paolo or Vice Overseer Byrne. And I don't see you or me beating a path to the crone's hand or up to the temporary stronghold the Abbey's got set up. A, B, C. Okay. Again, choice making. Oh, man. I'm in a not good spot here. <coughs> ah, 
I'm hungry. And then there's that guy there, but I wonder if he'll see me. I do think the officers. Oh, uh, who saw me? Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. Oops. Damn it. I was like, uh, I didn't want to. Oh, look at his face protecting himself from the dust. Um, I, I was hoping to not have to rely on a sleep dart, you know? No mercy! That would have been the easiest thing. I was like, I could have just shot him and put him all to sleep, but I wanted to see if I could go for the grab. That's right, we tried. I love the one guy's like covering my face from dust. Someone's humming up there. Rewiring means kills instead of just straight up turning it off, so... Where is this plugged into? God, why is this so far away? Ah, I see. I guess it makes sense to put the power source so far away. I hear blood flies. I no longer hear blood flies. Yeah, that maggot's stuck out of here. I'm tired of cleaning silver dust out of my ears. Grand Palace. That's an assignment. All apples and slippers. <laughs> Go to sleep, everybody. The mine collapses. Numerous casualties. A representative from the miners' family committee reports that another silver mine has partially collapsed, leaving eight miners injured and killing 12. The committee maintains that the Duke's unrealistic production goals were the true culprit, citing the overlong shifts that have been in practice since mine owner Aramis Stilton disappeared. The mines are now managed directly by the Grand Palace until such a time as Stilton returns, or until a new director can be found. However, the Grand Palace's official statement blamed the collapse on human error and threatened to arrest anyone found guilty of demoralizing the people of Karnaka. We at the Karnaka Gazette certainly support the effort to maintain Sokono's unity. Our thoughts go to the families of those injured or killed. Dust from the mine. Oh, it was another windmill-powered one, of course. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, the stealth opportunities for a little dust storm is, is fun. Use the cover of the storm. Honestly, sometimes I just like to see if I can get there without having to rely on my powers, but okay. Alright, let's turn that off. Dusty in here. Okay, well, let's take a look. We'll go through the wall. Room 20 meters away. So, I think we can get to this one now. I locked it. Stay there. Hmm. We 
Maybe I still have to go through here to get it. Oh, or here. Oh, this is where Megan is. Okay. least in this direction. The overseers won't just leave the district. And the howlers can't. Paolo has a price on Burns' head. And the vice overseer effectively wants the same thing. Okay, she's just talking to herself. Another city. Another slum. Going back to Dunwall stirred up memories. Things I'd almost forgotten. Almost. Let's keep listening, see what she has to say while we take this opportunity to eavesdrop. <laughs> if she says anything else. No? Okay. Hello. Hello, Emily. Stilton's home is just beyond here. But getting inside will take some effort. I've been doing reconnaissance, talking to people. The overseers and the howlers have divided up the district. Just ahead is neutral territory where no one will harass you. But further on, the howlers and the overseers both have boundaries set up. And beyond those points, they'll attack you on sight. Aramis Stilton is the real goal. Sokolov said you had an idea. Yes. I believe that if you take out Paolo or Vice Overseer Byrne, the other one will grant you safe passage and will help you get inside Stilton's home. Neutralize either one of them and bring him to the other. What else do you know that might help me? Byrne is protected by the Overseers. Paolo has the Howlers, but I think he's also got some kind of black magic charm. They say he's got to die twice before the sun sets, or he can't be killed. Good luck with that. So you're going to make him explode into rats, and then explode into rats again. Um, so they'll attack on sight unless you're carrying the enemy's leader. Paolo has some kind of charm that allows him to resurrect once a day. Okay. When the Duke falls, one of these groups could own Karnaka. Better get to know huh. them now. Deliver one leader to the other or find another way. The entrance to Stilton's home is below. That's where I got jumped by the Duke's men a few years back when Stilton went missing. I killed three of them and got away with my life. Alright, I just discovered that the first 30 minutes of the episode is basically my webcam and audio being out of sync. So I apologize for that, but I've probably fixed it in post. And that will explain the weird sort of background behind my webcam being a little bit out of sync is to get my voice and lips to match up as close as possible. When the Duke falls, one of these groups could own Karnaka. Better get to know them now. But uh, we have a third objective, Megan. It says find another way. Sad news. Agatha, you can probably guess the reason for my letter. He died last night. He seemed a little better and took some broth. Little Al even got him laughing a bit. But the laughing turned to coughs that lasted for about an hour. And then it stopped real sudden, like he didn't have the strength to cough no more. Then he sort of spit up some black and more came out his nose. I tried to get him to cough it all out. I turned him on his side and slapped his back and put boiled onions on his chest. But it weren't no use. And he died like that, eyes bulging out and that black stuff everywhere. I'm taking the children and moving back to Redmore. We ain't never should have come here in the first place, Jillian. And Sheesh. Were complaining about dust from the mines falling on the city. It's kind of like, yeah. You know, you see like this room, and you just you can feel that whole event that took place in here. They really nail the uh, environmental storytelling. It's the blood of our enemies. The blood of our enemies. Okay. So, Overseer Outpost. 
in the cronies and saloon. I'm in neutral territory. All right, so it'll pop up for me. We'll grab ourselves a rune. We've got two at the moment. I want to upgrade to potentially getting more domino, but we'll see. We have to go into both territories to get all the items that we so crave. Um, I think we should... Well, I don't know how to find another way. This is going to be the fun thing to figure out. Maybe we're able to talk to Paolo and Burn. Or there'll be a third person to, to talk to. Impaled Overseer Masks. A bottle of Orion? A bottle of Orbon? Rum for each overseer mask. Help thugs like the Howlers or the Zealots from the Abbey. I just don't know. Okay. So the district, we've got the Sheck Point, the Stilton Manor, the Hand Saloon, Valia Street, and the Overseer Outpost. So Stilton Manor is just around the corner from us here. This is, this is it here, sorry. Not just around the corner. Yeah. Jemmy's sister says you can beat any lock in the city. I'm not sure why Stilton's hop. Oh. Uh, never mind. Maybe another time. Why oh. not? Let's go. <laughs> I never know when dialogue's gonna get interrupted. This door was sealed by order of the you Duke. Someone might have recognized that me. Jindosh build the special lock. Came to see the infamous Jindosh lock, did you? I should have kept Enough my distance and eavesdropped. Impossible. You never know when dialogue's gonna get interrupted or not. Um, family heirlooms. Oh, so you've got to research all of the different families. And what their heirloom would be, and then in you go. Marcola, Winslow, Finch. Yeah, so you've got five families, and then their heirlooms. Well, Finch would be the bird. So we can rule the bird out. just have to research these families. Jindosh Riddle. Oh, there's a... Hang on. Okay. Oh. Oh! I thought we were going to have to walk around the whole place and then go and... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I thought we were going to have to go around and research, but there's a riddle. Interesting. At the dinner party were Lady Winslow, Dr. Marcola, Countess Conti, Madame Natso, and Baroness Finch. The women sat in a row. They all wore different colours, and Lady Winslow wore a jaunty blue hat. Baroness Finch was at the far left. Oh. The family's positions will also make sense too. You're going to have to put the, the names in a specific spot. All right. Um... Let's make note of this. Okay, so uh, Finch is on the far left. Just one, two, three, four, five for our names. Finch. Next to the guest wearing a purple jacket. Okay, so next to the guest in purple. So whoever's wearing purple will be number two. Um... The lady in white sat left of someone in green. 
I remember that white outfit because the woman spilled her absinthe all over it. The traveler from Freyport was dressed entirely in red. So other colors is white, green, and red. When one of the dinner guests bragged about her war medal, the woman next to her said they were finer in Freyport where she lived. Okay, so Freyport in red. Um, so I'll do Freyport and then the medal is either belonging to the woman in green or white. Madame Natsau showed off a prized diamond. So Natsio is the diamond. We just have to figure out where she sat in the group. At which the lady from Karnaka scoffed, saying it was no match for her ring. Okay, so the ring is person from Karnaka. Someone else carried a valuable snuff tin, and when she saw it, the visitor from Bailton almost spilled her neighbor's wine. Dr. Marcola raised her whiskey in toast. The lady from Dubovka, Dubokva, full of beer, jumped up on the table, falling onto the guest in the center seat, spilling the poor woman's rum. They all have different drinks. The count then Countess Conti captivated them all with a story about her wild youth in Dunwall. In the morning, there were four heirlooms under the table. The war medal, bird pendant, the ring and the snuff tin, but who owned each? So interestingly enough, the diamond is not included with the information, with the four heirlooms. Wow, okay. So we, we know where Finch is, far left, and sat next to someone in purple. I guess wearing a purple jacket, White sat next to... Lady in white sat left of someone in green. So, left of someone in green. So, green could either be in the middle or number four. And then... Lady in white is either in four or five. Finch is on the far left. We know that much. And so... Oh, so the bird pendant. Well, I, I'm just going to say that the, we're going to just give the bird pendant to Finch. But does the bird pendant come into the story at all? I don't think it does. Diamond, ring, war medal, snuff tin. Jumped up onto the table, falling onto the guest in the center seat. Spilling the poor woman's rum. I know that we've got clues for like what people would be drinking. Lady in white sat left of someone in green. I remember that white outfit because the woman spilled her absinthe all over it. So that means that... That means that white outfit is four because the person in the middle has rum. Um, so full of beer jumped up on the table, falling onto the guest in the center, spilling the poor woman's rum. So we've got rum in the center seat. The white outfit has absinthe. So the woman, so someone else carried a valuable snuff tin and when she saw it, the visitor from Bailton next to her 
almost spilled her neighbor's wine. So we've basically tried to decide that rum is in the middle, absinthe is next to it on the right, and then red potentially has the beer. I think that the metal is over this side but I don't know which family it is. Lady, Doctor, Countess, Madam, and Baroness. I wonder if that also plays into what they would be drinking, you know? If she's talking about her wild youth, then Conti potentially has the snuff tin. She's potentially still using. Uh, Conti, snuff tin. Bailton next to her almost spilled her neighbor's wine. So I'm going to give Conti the snuff tin. Natsale has the diamond. Ugh. Snuffed him. Um. Okay. Finch on the left. This is crazy seeing all of the decent clues. You gotta read this, like, so many times to, like, piece all of this together. I'm wondering now as well if we've got a situation where it's saying like the, the women are all sat in a row and it's saying something like Baroness Finch was at the far left and in our perspective I assume we are when we get the term far left we are looking onwards and it's our far left and then when it says the lady in white sat left of someone in green it would be their left left of someone in green so you like you got to pay attention to that that wording you have all of the variables written down and then starting again on a different piece of paper i have to write down the answers and then attach them to the people you have some that give you answers like you can find out what some people are drinking you can find out what some people are wearing you can find out their item so like Marcola has the whiskey. Natsau has the diamond. Winslow is wearing blue. It's really hard to put this together because, yeah, I think Finch is there. Winslow has the ring. Natsau has the diamond. I think Conti has the snuff tin. And so I think Marcola could potentially be the one with our war medal here. Um, and the traveler from Freyport was dressed entirely in red. When one of the dinner guests bragged about her war medal, the woman next to her said they were finer in Freyport where she lived. So I think I might put the woman in red on the far right. And I might put the, so I might put
what if Finch doesn't have the bird just because it's their name, you know? Because that's been one thing that I've just stuck there. But bird, pendant, and finch. I'm just like, come on, that's got to be a short thing. I'm wondering if, um, like, I would assume, so I would assume that the positions of the women are important. But con considering how it's all the dinner party with Lady Winslow, Macola, Countess, Conte, Madame Nusso, they were all sat in a row and all wore different colors. So has the diamond. The longer we go through this, the more that I doubt Finch having the bird. I feel like it could be, that could be a red herring. But then I don't know what else to give. I think Activated them all with a story. Because I think at this point we're getting the positions of the. We could potentially just be getting the positions of the the women wrong. We could have the combinations right, but their positions out of order. Uh, Winslow, Winslow definitely has, <laughs> I think Winslow definitely has the ring, but like the bird pendant, do we think this, maybe I could have the snuff tin wrong. It's like the ones that I start feeling confident on are the ones that I change. I got it. Holy shit. We did it. Now to find Aramis Stilton. Oh, <laughs> I... Hang on. We don't want to go in yet, but I opened it. Holy shit. I did it. I solved the riddle. Okay. Nice. After all of that reading, I think I've been here for, I think I've been here for 30 minutes. After all of that reading, I, we know that Natsau had the diamond. The way that it was going through, I was like, war medal with Marcola. Winslow's got the ring. And I was stuck. I was so concrete about Finch having the bird just because of the name. And that was my hang up and Conti talking about the wild youth i was like snuff tin for sure i think those two were misleading i don't know if the position of uh i think i must have got the position of the women right so uh, i think that means um we had purple conti was purple Winslow was blue. Uh, Marcola was red. No, but that doesn't make sense because that doesn't even line up with... Huh. I wonder if the positions of the the women doesn't even actually matter. Because I'm pr pretty sure, like, Winslow was in blue. But that sort of throws a lot of the other colors out of... out of the mix. We got, we got the door open. Okay, so we managed to deduce most of that. And then it was sort of a matter of the other pieces that were slightly confusing that we had like felt pretty concrete about were actually wrong about. But there you go. I'm happy with that. We solved it. Now we still have obviously more of this place to explore. We've got to get all of our items. 
and we can go to the other outposts, but I just love that we can now <laughs> go back in here and we can avoid the uh, the war between them. Uh, very good. All right, I'm making my save after that. Hey, I've been here for 30 minutes. <laughs> it's open, baby. Hey, guys, I got it. I if you're trying to get into Stilton's, Give up. Probably away. nothing left to steal anyway. Just don't go. Just don't go in there, okay? I'll be back. <sighs> so now I can go grab my other stuff. How cool, huh? Right. Now we're in the dust district, and you're howling at me. Stay on your side, or you'll be spitting teeth. As far as I know, you might be an overseer spy. Hmm. We pissed off. Um, let's do... Well, I wonder if finding another way to obtain the solution to the lock without helping the howlers of the overseers search the hand saloon and the outpost for clues. So the other way is just leave them both alone, find the clues. I wonder what the clues will be now that we find them. Um, I'll be quite curious. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go and discover the clues. I don't know about choosing a side between this group. Oh, hello. What I do know is that the uh, audio, in terms of the, the wind and everything, is crazy. At first I thought you were one of Paolo's gang, but you don't look so bad up close. Yeah, I'm cool. The wind is very strong here. Please stay in the part of the shop open to the public. Okay, I will. Label of authenticity. Ooh, black market down this way. Years ago, the mines were a good job. Stilton made sure of it. Tonight. No one got in? fired for being injured. Yeah, so they say. The mining office handled things like that. And the family committee made sure that the bosses never got too greedy. Kind of a stalemate. Everything worked as long as one side didn't win out over the other. And that's oh. exactly what happened once Stilton disappeared. I love the atmosphere of this place. This is cool. Looks like this is a way in to get to a bone charm. Hostile territory. Okay. I swear the game. I swear I'm locking on and it disappears. Abello, are you sure you know what you're doing? I studied field tactics with Brother Cardoza in the peninsula. The pirate crews there resort to these same dirty tricks. Seems like a good way to take a dart to the belly. Well, the howlers aren't known for their caution. But these aren't too hard to deal with. If you've got a steady hand, and you know what cables to cut, you've got to do it just right. Hmm. Wait a second. Kind of hoping that they save me the trouble and make a mistake. Yeah, that is a precarious spot for me to grab you Maybe right next to the cable. To the spring plate. Looks like it's been double looped. Okay, we'll do that. That also saves me some trouble. To 
Taking that by the bags, boy. Alright. I'm going for a bone charm. All that riddle solving, though. I gotta go to the bathroom. I've been sat here losing my mind connecting dots for ages. Find another way, brother. This path is barred to traffic. I can't believe this. I've Am I neutral territory if I, I'm out here? If you believe this to be an inconvenience, weigh it against losing I'm back in neutral territory. To the now go. Be good to me. Mama needs to oh. Uh. Oh, it's the black market. Here's me trying to like. Okay. Watch yourself. One of the underground shops got robbed recently. What? Oh, but you have to be the person who helped out one of ours in the conservatory district. Yeah. Hmm, special discount for you then. Wow, because we helped out the previous black market with the discount carries over. Hell yeah. Impact grenades and armored bullets. We don't need those, but that's okay. Uh, um. You want blueprints for better weaponry. I'll take this opportunity to <coughs> get another charge for a stun mine. So we got two additional times and it can chain. You can do business. That's crazy. Uh, we'll do the selling incendiary bolts so I can take care of blood flies and stinging bolts as well. And then I'll do a spot of shopping. Um, so let's get the sleep darts, stinging bolts, and those. A map of Aramis Stilton's home. Digging through the Office of Architectural Planning, someone has found a map of the home. I'll take it. And we're good. Thank you. Come back soon. I mean, if I'm still here. Hmm. Alright, um... Who you work for, I serve all sides. You've got the bone charm in your house? Can I have that? Hey, that, that bone charm you got back there. That's all I can do to keep the dust out. Oh, okay. Um... There's a code. No, we'll need this so I, I gotta break... I gotta break in in order to get the, the bone charm. That's a choice. This. Someone knocked off some of my competition not long ago. Good, I see. Where are we gonna get the oh, clue from, though? You know. Helped out one of ours in the conservatory district. Hmm. Special discount for you then. Hmm. Discount for you then. I'm surprised I can't just buy the charm, right? You can buy runes. But you can't buy charms. Oh god. Okay, so we got another block door as well. There's an open window. I think. Alright, let's get in through the window. This might be our complicated way See, <laughs> through. Alright, so... Back out here. Is there an open window? These windows all look too thin. Is it a curse or a blessing to linger past your time in the world? I don't think we have a window. So we got a blocked door, but I do not know how to get in. <sighs> Oh, hang on. Oh, this is the open window. God, it's much lower than I thought. Hang on. This is the window. Gotcha. Um, I hate that I got to do that every time. Like, I get, like, you want to hide them because you don't want to use them, but at the same time, whenever, on the rare moment, I do want to use it. I have to unhide everything all over again. Okay. 
It's just the fact that we're lower down here. Good to see you again. I think I heard something. Okay. Yes, yes, indeed. Someone died here? He's just unconscious, okay? Shit! Or he passed out with the bottle. Wedding Silvergraph. Wed the month of rain, a love without refrain. Madotti Silvergraph Studio capturing special moments. I don't know what I ate to deserve that. Unsent letter. Sweetheart, I'm still not sure when I'll be able to join you. I can't close up the shop or leave my brother alone right now. Running a black market business is every bit as tricky as I'd always imagined. The conflict in the district shows no sign of abating. Day and night, we hear overseer gunshots and those screaming bolts used by the howlers. We stay inside, hoping for all this to end soon. Whenever I feel sad, I look at our wedding silver graph. What a special day that was. I have an anniversary surprise for you, and I'm not sure I'll be able to wait to give it to you. Stay safe, my dear. I love you, Martha. So he's just drinking upstairs, and she's running the shop. Um, is that our, is that our clue to the safe? Not a safe, sorry. The um. that I'll clue to the code for the door. Is the numbers on here? I can't read the, oh, hang on, the note goes into my inventory, doesn't it? Um, wedding silver graph. Wed the month of rain. Um, God. Do, did we pick up a calendar at some point? I remember reading the calendar, but I don't think it was a note that we picked up. I think it was just one that we found in the in the world itself. So now I'm thinking if they've given us a clue for the date of a wedding. Ah, oh, here it is. Aha. So month of rain, which is the fourth month, and the 18th day has been circled. They got a calendar. How about that? A house with a calendar. So it should be 418. Nice. All right, now just need her to not notice that I'm stealing from her so I can get this bone charm. <laughs> I want to freak him out. Putting her to sleep will also notify her of the obvious breach. You're going to get steal this without her seeing. Oh. Okay, well that still worked. I was meant to grab it and pull it to me, but that's also fine. Um, <laughs> move slightly faster while carrying a body. Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Our bone charm. That was a little bit of a journey. Oh. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this one, which is close to Howler territory. And close to bone. Uh, 
to Bloodfly territory. Dust. Look sharp, she says. Stay away, she said. Of our rune. Okay. Mindy says he's carrying some old lady's hand. Which dead a dog's age ago. Maybe before we were born. Yo. But it keeps them alive. It's the hand of Granny Rags? Because Granny Rags could do the rats. As well. Huh. I guess that means that when we eliminated, uh, when we eliminated Rags in Dishonored 1, that's seemingly the, uh, the canon choice, or maybe she just eventually dies another way. Huh. That's pretty funny. Bro's got the hands of Granny Rags. A neat little bit of eavesdropping. Okay. So the Crone's Hand Saloon is still over the line into hostile territory, but it does say if we search it, we can get a clue. I just have to stay out of their sight. Hostile territory time. <coughs> they howling. When it comes storm here, it's really use a mug of something cool. Of course, it's locked from the inside. Word and I'm stuck over here. What a racket. Damn. Okay. Try even higher up. There you go, there's our way in. I'm back in neutral territory. Can't go wasting all my incendiary bolts now, can I? Not as soon as I got them. Ooh. Another one of these dudes. Oh, they're attacking the rats. Emily's sure they're contracted after this, huh? <laughs> God, this is the most I've been attacked by them. Surely this dude should be coming for me now. I've made so much noise. Where this dude at? There we go. You're down there. Right, keep walking. I'll try and see if I can grab him behind. Good to buy in this to keep her. Oh, there's another one. Did you know that there is another one? It was two this time, would you believe it?
Got any flammables in here, anyone? Looks like this is just another way into there. We've just kind of gone around the back way. Okay. Hope no one else comes up here, huh? So we can at least get this shrine, but we don't know where the actual clue that we can discover is, and obviously we don't need the clue. I think what's fun is we can at least explore these areas, get the necessary loot, get some information. But I don't think we're going to deliver one or the other to the groups. There might be some paintings. I'm looking at all these paintings on the wall. I got another dust storm coming in. The artwork is so cool, especially the massive ones. This must be Paolo's place. Alright, so we're in Paolo's actual house, huh? Oh, hello. He's got a portrait of himself. Paolo and the Inaccessible Cardinal. Yep. The Abbey of the Everyman. Which we have not read before. Okay, there we go. Surprisingly enough. The Abbey of the Everyman is the seat of religious power and inspiration for all overseers across the Empire. The Order arose over the years to protect the common people from the ravages of the outsider until the need for a central bastion of authority was deemed necessary. This imposing structure is a destination for pilgrims seeking refuge or guidance. Many mistakenly attribute the Abbey's construction of High Overseer Benjamin Holger when it was actually in Holger's succession, John Clavering, who laid the foundation. Shortly after the abbey was completed, every overseer in the land gathered there and began a trek to Whitecliff. There, a great siege commenced, and the overseers purged the region. The battle raged against heretics, witches, and thralls of the outsider. Though Holger was killed in the struggle, Whitecliff was cleansed, and the ceremonial rites that followed lasted for a month, giving birth to many invocations and speeches that were inscribed in tomes and carried back to the abbey, where they are still revered today. The Seven Scriptures. Paolo's concern. Mindy, be on your toes, my twin spirit friend. I got jumped and I'd be bleeding away in the void if I hadn't run off like a rat. They had their face covered. So they're talking about me just like shooting them with the sleeping dart. Not overseer, not grand guard. Someone from out of town, I think. Someone good. All our troubles and now some masked stranger from across the waters. Spread the word. Paolo should be stiff for this one. I love that because that wouldn't have been there if we didn't do anything about it. Oh, we got two in one for paintings. Very good. Vera Moray and the affix of her skin. That about confirms it, because Vera Moray is granny rags. She's got her hand. He's got her hand. Vera Moray. I remember that name. That's right. I guess the outsider may talk about it. In case you're wondering, Paolo's not one of those unhinged cultists who believe I will grant them favors if they leave a big enough offering, 
or play just the right musical notes. He doesn't care a fig for me. But he put up this shrine because he found the hand of an old witch I knew once. And Paolo saw right away that it pays to have an edge. Sometimes, pieces of us linger long after we're gone. The Duke of Circonos inherited a vibrant city and wasted no time stripping it to the bone. What will he leave behind? And what about you? Who will you leave to pick up the pieces here in the Jewel of the South? Cool little chat. An old witch I once knew, huh? Alright, runes acquired. We now have five, so... Could go for the doppelganger. The mesmerized one is really cool, actually. I kind of want to get mesmerized. Enthrall humans or hounds. So it captivates two of them, then removes their short-term memory. Only those mesmerized can see the summoned entity. Allies of those enthralled will notice their strange behavior. So it enthralls the closest living target, use it to avoid a group of enemies who will become unaware of what's happening around them, or use it in combat, making them vulnerable to your attacks. And we can enthrall up to three with another three. The duration lasts longer and get up to four. It's a very expensive thing to put your points into. Um, I definitely want it, because it seems super fun. The fact that you can use the same trait up to four times, so you can just literally stack your abilities, that is incredibly broken. Because you can have uh, Swift Stalker times four, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. It has a lot of potential to really break things, or at least help you out tremendously, but I think I want to experiment with the other powers a bit more. I want to be able to grab bodies, but it's not stealthy. <laughs> I want to be able to mesmerize. Let's save up and, and try mesmerize. So we'll keep the runes on hand for now. And we have to go... You'd think that the clue that we'd be looking for would be in his own room. This does seem like his important spot. <laughs> but perhaps he has no information at all. And the true information lies at the Overseer office. I guess the good news is that we don't, like I said, we don't really need that. We just need the the loot. Help the Grand Guard out of our homes. But I don't see how you can help the miners. It's all connected, Tivoli. Once the Abbey's off our backs, Hello, Pedro Pascal. I'll make it too expensive for the Duke to run the mines. The workers stop digging, the Duke will see that mines producing at half speed are more profitable than mines producing nothing. For better working conditions and less dust in the streets, we'd be happy to up our payments. There's a way to satisfy everybody. First, in this district, then across the city. The people who work the mines have more power than they know. Thank you, Paolo. So he's going to be eliminated twice. I'm assuming you could like not do, be non-lethal. You could sleep dart him, but then you would have to like sleep dart him again. Stepping away for a moment, right? Don't drink all the rum while I'm gone. Like I guess, like how is that going to work? You know, like is he going to run away and then you got to wait for him to? Stop being rats. What are you out there thinking, vice overseer? Down on the ground, it's dark and it's cold. Don't get no breaks, do it as they're told. The 
Oh shit. He's with an overseer. He's torturing him for information. Okay. He's got someone with him. Ooh! Um. Okay. Um. Okay. So he's gonna go into a bunch of rats. When you do this, and then he's gonna eat you. But I don't know what to do now. Because what do we do now? Pablo disappeared into a swarm of rats and resurrected elsewhere. To truly die, he must be killed twice in one day. So now I have to find him. Oh, there he is. Nice. So now I have to get him again. So he went into a bunch of rats and is still kicking. Oh, no. Above them now. Come on! It's where I saw someone. You cross one howler, you cross. Where? We'll get you. You can't ass. hide from us. Oh, where'd you come from? Damn. Where are you? <coughs> Don't huh. you know who's looking Hello. for you? We'll open this door. Maybe, maybe the wind. Uh, so maybe search this whole place. <laughs> Don't have time for that. It's so pretty. <laughs> so much dust. So we could put him to sleep again. We could grab him from behind. You reckon you could make him flee and forget? I wonder. Give him a bit of a sting. Okay, that dude is in an interesting spot. All right, we're gonna go above. No, we're not. Seems different somehow. Jesus. Different. I'm gonna go in the window. Why? Let me in the window. Holy shit. Let me in. Oh, what the? Dude. Come on. Let me in the window. Let's try the other window. Oh, dude. Why? Okay. My god. Really didn't want to let me in the window, dude. Found anything. Oh, rum if you find this chopper. Oh well, now everyone's here. Jesus Christ! It can't be that hard to find this one loser. He's going down. Yeah. Whoever spots him gets a bump. I promise. Hello, anybody? Don't make Look me search everywhere. the whole place. Oh, that's so annoying. That stupid window. <laughs> God, why'd you have to go down lower, huh? Look around, they're still here. Yeah, that was nice. Huh. Oh, it's over. What the f wait, what? Whoa, they went right past me! They just ran! Just ran right past me. Holy shit. What the hell? Dude. <laughs> what? 
Don't make me search this whole place. I don't have time for that. I want to grab him, but honestly, I think we could just sting him from a distance for the same effect, you know? It's no use. Nothing after all. Next time. Alright, everybody seems to be giving up now. But now Paolo's, like, surrounded. All I need to do is just get him with a, a sleeping dart. Like, it's that simple. But I, I want to, like, try and grab him. But this will be the second time in one day. The unfortunate thing is I can't go up there because he's being followed by someone. Now I've got to go back upstairs because he's gone back upstairs. Disarray spreads after Parliament fire. We've received devastating news out of Dunwall indicating the Parliament building there has been partially destroyed by fire. The swiftly spreading blaze resisted all attempts at extinguishing, and panic ensued as smoke and flames spread to outlying neighborhoods. Many deaths and injuries have been reported, with dozens yet unaccounted for. Authorities have not ruled out arson, but the smoldering ruins are yet unsafe and are as a hindrance to investigations. Meanwhile, all Gristolian parliamentary activities have ceased, and most commercial routes are now closed, making it inadvisable to travel to Dunwall at this time. After, after this, I still gotta get the charms. my guy that's causing me an issue. Oh. Hi. How are you? Oh, oh, dude, why were they this too? Oh, dude. No. That's so good. That is, that's so good. Isn't that? Isn't that so good? Look how many there are. Oh man. It's, it's so unfortunate. And Paolo's here too. You really want to do this, guys? You really want to do it? You're going to kill your friends? Don't do it. Alright, we're doing good. We're, we're doing good, just parrying, deflecting. All right. How you killed was a friend of mine. You kill them. All right, there you go. I'm not killing anyone. You're all getting choked out. <laughs> there we go. This time we got him. Oh! Oh! Did! Oh! Paolo had a mummified hand. <laughs> The hand still lives. Oh my god, I'm glad that we did that. But that was very... That was like, alright, we're just gonna go this way into a room of two guys. Perfect. Jesus, that's so unfortunate. Okay. Um, cornered animal. I think we got... I think we got a couple. Um, iron roots and cornered animal. Knockdowns are much less likely to affect you and your attack damage is significantly increased when your health is low. God, that was, uh, that was scary. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, that was my plan all along. Um, oh, also, I don't... They're all alive. So Pablo struck at me, and I think... I'm just seeing the blood, though. But it's... They're all saying I'm conscious. I think we're good. There were no kills there. Okay. Um, wonderful. I don't know if that was every guard around the place, but we can now proceed to do 
Um, bone charm recovery. I don't know if the... You're an enemy. Okay. So there's, there's still some around. Some howlers are still Makes a person sick roaming. Death in the Month of Songs, an excerpt from a longer work translated from Old Sokonan by Anissa Mateo of Sokonos. She was shy in the month of hearths, hiding from my scented letters, a sun-dappled cure for my loneliness. She was smiling in the month of rain, eating figs straight from the tree, a dream of sailing around the isles. She was wed in the month of clans to her sailor cousin from Calero, a shrill bird drilling at my chest. She was dying in the month of songs, struck by disease from the east, a terrible kiss on her distant lips. Durante's key. Durante's room. Bernard, Durante got himself nicked by the Abbey's boys, which means that they've got his office key. <laughs> and it means he might have told them how to open the Jindosh lock. I need you to find a way to open Durante's door, and no, burning the building to the ground is not an option. God damn it. I also want you to start dropping off food for old Stilton and. Oh. Until we find someone to replace Durante. Dropping off food for old Stilton. Hmm. Once you manage to get his office open, you'll find all the details inside. Be very careful when you go into Stilton's manor. If the overseers do have the code to Jindosh Lock, they might want to have a peek inside too. So we're to investigate Durante, which is um, in the overseer's place. I got a spiked grenade housing. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Wanted. I love how they hang up the wanted posters, like they're proud of it. Very good. Silver pocket watch. This is why it's worth going out and doing this, even though we found our way into the mansion already. Good loot, baby. Alright. Now we've got to get over to the Overseer Outpost. Oh, actually, you know what? There is also the prisoner that Paolo was interrogating, right? Should probably deal with that. Hmm. Think oh. you're being quiet? There's still someone kicking. Musical players have scrammed. Okay. It's you. You're my issue. Those guys can freak out because they're like innocent. Now, if we go down here, this dude's still there. But that sword. The Grand Guard. Hey! Oh Jesus! My God! Okay. The sands of Sokonos. Oh, nice! It's the the song that they were singing. That's very cool. Uh, so there's a guard in here. So he's just going to stand there. Alright, we'll grab him. Go this guy. You alive? Is this the void? Are you the cursed outsider? I... Uh, I... 
Oh. oh. Can you free the guy? Or is that not possible? You are nearly friendless and hunted like a beast. Yet still you act with honor. Own charms. Old Widow's Recipes, Marnie's Secret Powders for bringing on frightful illusions, blurred vision and the like. Dry 20 purple sea slugs in the sun until they be crisp and light as feathers. Put them in water with these. One dried burdock root, four dried neem leaves, half a measure of whalebone, finely shaved. Grind until powdery, keep very dry until ready to use. Careful not to get any in your eyes. And Adeline's uh, Night Drops for inducing night terrors and starving your enemies of sleep. Soak a ripe lemon in a mug of goat's milk for five days until the milk turns to green foam. Should be thick and pungent. Discard the lemon. Mix the foam with a bit of honey for taste and bottle it up tight with a stopper. Five drops in the fellow's drink should do the trick. And we have Spirited. Alexa's restore slightly more mana. Very good. Secondary coiling. We got a plan. Very good. Okay, I think I've got what I need here. Um, I don't think I can free the overseer because if I strike him with a blade, it's going to probably attack him. He seems like he's uh, a little too out of it to even. Oh, there you go. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I was like, maybe I can cut the rope. I actually think we probably did the greatest thing for him and put him out of his misery. If you can't free him from his prison, uh, we free him from life. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the deal is there, but that, that didn't feel like a, a situation we could really win, which is a, a bit unfortunate. All right, now we need to get out of here. We'll be back for that other bone charm when we go and pop into the Overseer District. Oh, ah, uh, ooh, yep. Remember when they were talking about those tripwires? That was so long ago now that I've totally forgotten. This person already triggered the other one. Alright, we're still in hostile territory. Yeah, I see. It's suspicious. And there's Overseer. Are we still in hostile territory? Silvergraph Studio key needed. God damn. Okay. I think I'm. Because they're, uh, they're guarding there. Okay. Hang on. I'm not in neutral territory, which is weird because it feels like they're both blocking their own sides. All right, we'll go up here. If the Duke wasn't running the mines night and day, our children wouldn't be choking themselves to sleep at night on the dust. It's easy to blame the Duke, but we both depend on the profits from industry. The mines are the lifeblood of this city. No. The Duke could have continued operations like his father did. Fast enough to sustain the city without burying us all in dust. How? There are twice as many people living in Karnaka now. If the mine slowed down, half the people in my family would be out of work. What's the point of being worked into an early grave? Just so you can afford to eat for a while? They will rise up among you like a virulent swarm, devouring everything wherever they go. Even Phil. We just wanted to listen to what they had to say. Now we can make our way over to the studio. Get this bone charm. I am in neutral territory now. There you go. There we go. Oh, Hot cocktail. Exploding bottles inflict damage over a, whiting, a wider area. Very good. Amadeo Monte. Amadeo Monte, artist, draws advertisements and portraits for the newspapers. Lives near the dockyard. 
Spotted him when he lost his shirt in a game of dice with Corinne's hand. Seems to have interesting ink on his back. Really want to check it out. Met up. Definitely has some very unusual tattoos. I might have to see him again. Once or twice. Take time to make a good sketch. He's cute, so that part will be easy, but I need to be careful. I think we were followed. Probably one of those limp dicks from the Abbey. Shit, they got him. Okay. They got him. Reminder, check out the whale. Heard that one of the whaling ships from Santiago Fisheries brought in a big fat one bleeding all over the docks for a while because of an argument over port taxes. I need to go take a look at one of these nights because it's totally rotten. I can probably snatch a few gallons of blood and grease to refill my ink stocks. Jesus. Okay, well we got the bone charm that was out this way, so that essentially leaves us with what we can find over in the overseer's office, as well as burn and uh, the clues around the place as well. Uh, but I think because we know that there's a lot to come with the overseer's place, then we have to actually go into Stilton's manor uh, itself. Uh, we've probably still got quite a bit more level to go. So we're going to read this love letter, and then we're going to bring this episode of Dishonored 2 to a close. So, love letter. Ah, Mindy. I've seen you fight three at once with only half a broken shovel, but it's not your mean streak that I'm obsessed with. I want to bury my fingers in your hair. Has it ever met the teeth of a comb? I dream about running my fingernails over your scalp, barely touching you, licking the sweat from the soft down at the back of your neck. If I could, I'd grab your face fast enough to surprise you, and then I'd kiss your open mouth soft as a cat at the milk bowl. Mmm. There are tattoos across your shoulders and breasts, marks I want to trace and decipher, guessing at the meaning of each. This one is your first heartbreak, I imagine. And that one is the first time you stab someone, you little savage. I want to know all about you, to read the story on your body, all the chapters, even the secret ones. Do you have tattoos under your knickers? Legend has it that one of the boys who saw that ink and blabbed about it didn't survive to see it again. I want to bite you and kiss your skin just hard enough so you'll keep a mark. A new tattoo made by my lips and teeth. Maybe you'd shiv me in my sleep for doing that, but I won't care as long as you remember me for a few days. Mindy. <laughs> Jesus, okay. And with that one, what a delight. This is how we end this episode of Dishonored today. So, Mindy, I believe that we, we met, right, in um, our second episode when we were hanging around in uh, Karnica for the first time. She was the lady with all the tattoos. So, he was very keen to meet her. And I wonder if he got his wish and got shivved in his sleep. Very cool artwork around here. I like that. Mindy's Inc., her own little sort of studio. Very cool. Uh, the dust storm rolls in, and we bring this episode of Dishonored 2 to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next time we go to the Overseer Outpost, and then we head into Stilton's Manor. I'll see you next time.